With regards to the cooker and the gas circuit, the gas bottle is located outside so you just need to turn that on first. And then underneath the cooker you'll find there's a locker which you can just open up. And then up on the left hand side you'll see there's a, a yellow valve which is the isolator for the gas circuit with the switch in the horizontal position that's on and with the switch going across the pipe or vertical that's off. We always recommend that you turn this off when you're not using the cooker just for safety reasons. Then the cooker is controlled just using the knobs on the front of the cooker there you just got to hold those knobs in light the cooker with a match. If you hold it in for 10 seconds then that will activate the flame failure device and the flame will stay alight. Here you can see the 240 volt microwave which will only work when you're on shore power. You've got two access points to the fridge and if you look inside the fridge you'll see there's the fridge controller that sets the th there's temperature inside the fridge so you can turn that on or off or anywhere in between. This is your manual foot pump for the seawater tap. So as we look around the saloon, underneath all the seats is plenty of storage and behind the seats you'll see some storage as well and then obviously you've got the cupboards either side of the saloon for additional storage. Here you can see the chart table, so the chart table slides up and down and that allows you to create an extra seat when you're not sailing. So all you need to do is just go underneath and you pull the plunger and then the chart table We'll just lower down and there's a cushion to put on top. And there's a chart table seat in the lower position with the seat all made up. Behind the rear seat in the saloon you'll find the Rain Rain Gyro Compass which you can just see fitted up in the top left hand corner there. Just be careful what you put into the drawer as you don't really want anything too metallic next to the uh, gyro compass as it may affect its performance. On the front end of the port side saloon seating if you lift up that cushion, you'll find the water pump and the changeover valves for the fresh water circuit. So lift up the wooden panel. And then inside here you'll see the fresh water pump and then also the two changeover valves for the forward and aft tank. And again, like the Seacocks, if the lever is pointing along the pipe that means it's on and if pointing across the pipe that means it's off. So tank number two is the forward water tank, tank number one is the aft water tank and you can see the control levers there to switch them on or off. It's always best to leave one off and one on so you don't have them both on at the same time. Underneath the aft seat in the starboard side of the saloon you'll find the hot water tank. And then if you lift up the wooden panel Inside you'll see the hot water tank and you'll also see the 240 plug connector for the hot water tank again. So if you ever wanted to isolate the hot water tank then you can also just pull out that two pin plug or you can use the RCD, the circuit breaker in the starboard aft cabin. There are two things to pay attention to on the hot water tank. That is the thermostat valve so that controls the temperature and then down at the bottom is the overflow so if the hot water got too hot and it needed to vent off and drain some hot water out to allow the tank to cool down then that's where it will come out of at the bottom of the tank. That's also your drain so in the winter if you ever wanted to empty your hot water tank completely of water then that's where you, you drain the hot water tank from. So if you remove the small panel in the floorboard between the galley and the saloon table you'll see the access to the bilges and you'll see there the automatic electric pump and then also the manual pump filter as well. In the access panel in front of the galley sink you'll see the two seacocks, one's for the sink drain outlet and the other one's for the seawater foot pump. Under the floor in the forward cabin you'll find the log transducer and there's a bung there which you can use if you want to take the log out for cleaning. So at the base of the companionway steps you've got the wine storage area just underneath the floorboards there and there's also a dust tray so you can sweep debris from the floor. In the aft heads, the seacocks are underneath the sink. You've got 
the blue handled one, the big one on the left hand side, and that's your outlet for the holding tank. Then you've got the middle one, which is your shower drain and the sink drain. And then the right hand one is the toilet inlet. Then you've got a yellow pump, which is the shower drain pump. So in the aft heads, we've got an electric toilet. The top button just flushes water through the toilet. So you can just press that button and that will just circulate water through the toilet. Then the bottom button, that's a rocker button. If you push it to the left, that will just pump water into the toilet. And if you push it to the right, that'll drain the water out of the toilet and leave the bowl dry. And it's always best just to leave the bowl dry. So just when you're finished, just keep your finger on the right hand button and empty the bowl. So as we go into the forward heads, you can see the toilet there, sink, and then that panel there is the holding tank where the holding tank is. So if you open up that, you can see where the, the holding tank sits. Underneath the sink, underneath the head sink, you'll see all the, the outlets and inlets for the toilet. So the right hand one, blue handle, that's the, the waste outlet. If you want to use your holding tank, what you've just got to do is just close this handle and then now all your waste will go and sit in the holding tank until you open it again. Just be careful when you're opening up the holding tank again, there's a little metal slide that sits on the handle there and that's to prevent you from accidentally opening the holding tank. So you've got to push that little slide over to the right and then you can open up the holding tank and that will discharge and empty the waste out of the tank. The middle seacock is your shower pump discharge and your wash basin discharge. And then over on the left is your toilet in inlet. So your water for the toilet. Above that, you'll see there's a yellow pump and that's your shower drain pump, which comes on automatically. So as you use the shower, then that will automatically come on and pump out. As you come into the forward cabin, first thing you'll see underneath the mattress is the water tank. You can see there's a grey inspection hatch there underneath the water tank which you can undo if you needed to to gain access to it for cleaning. Then behind the mirror you'll see the anchor windlass motor there. So underneath the mattress in the forward cabin you'll also find the bow thruster batteries and also the bow thruster battery charger. And then either side you've got the lights and you've also got a USB socket and a 240 volt socket. On the starboard side, you've got the same on the port side, and you've got the switch that turns the lights on underneath the shelf. Then, just in the bottom left hand corner, as you walk into the forward cabin, you'll see the bow thruster battery switch, and then you've also got the windlass breaker, the anchor windlass breaker as well. So, if you ever overloaded the uh, anchor windlass and it's not working, then just check that trip switch there. If you open up the panel at the front of the forward cabin, you'll find the bow thruster, retractable bow thruster. And then you'll also see the two outlets for the anchor locker drain.